Hello, Pastor Jace here. How are you? I hope you're fine. Finally! Yes, finally! What? Paris Olympics are here! Yes! About 10,500 athletes from 206 countries have come together to show off their skills. Unlike other sports events, I really love the Olympics. And I am super excited. Sure, the opening ceremony and all the events are amazing, but there's more it than that. First off, they go through pain and tears and exhaustion, but never quit. That's what I like it about. I think all the Olympians deserve gold medals. For us, the Olympics happen every four years, but these athletes have trained their whole lives for this moment. Each day is a fierce battle for them. They wake up at dawn and start training, no matter the weather, rain, snow, hot, scorching sunshine, and they never stop. They fight through cold winters and hot and humid summers without giving up. So watching their dedication is so inspiring. That's why I like the Olympics. Secondly, the Olympics are like a human drama. Each athlete has a story full of struggles and triumphs. Marathoners and swimmers and gymnasts and figure skaters, they all train so hard for one perfect moment. They fall, get hurt, and get back up again and again. They have to stay calm under extreme pressure, building mental toughness to perform their best. Each athlete has a tearful moving story about why they compete and why they strive for a gold medal. That's why I love the Olympics. Seeing these athletes' perseverance makes me think about my own life. I want us to watch the Olympics and think about our life. How, what kind of effort we are making to make our life better. We face many challenges too. But like these Olympians, we should never give up. Don't just watch the games. Check out the stories of all the athletes. Let today's message help you get through this tiring summer when we can easily get irritated and complain. Today's Bible passage is also for people going through tough times. Lamentation is a book written by the prophet Jeremiah. Lamenting and crying out to God over the destruction of Jerusalem and the resulting suffering. It was written after Jerusalem was destroyed by Babylon. The Jerusalem temple was destroyed completely. And during this painful period, Jeremiah conveyed the message that God still remembered his love and com compassion for the Israelites. Yes, God still watches over us. He's still with us. Even if we can't see or hear him, God is with us all the time. God is watching over us right now. Amen? Amen. Here, listen to this voice. We will not be consumed. Let's read Lamentation chapter 3, verse 22. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassion never fail. Amen. Amen to that. Here, two words appear. Uh, love and compassion. Love is a Hebrew word, uh, has said. It signifies God's covenantal love and faithfulness. It goes beyond mere emotional sympathy, meaning enduring and faithful love. Compassion in the Hebrew, it signifies God's deep sympathy and mercy, representing gentle and protective love, like a mother caring for her child. Lamentation chapter 3 verse 22 reveals God's essential character. God is loving and compassionate, signifying that His love is unconditionally and eternally enduring. Amen? Amen. When we are struggling, it feels like God is not there. When things are tough, we easily complain, asking why God allows such things. But remember, God is always there for us. Are stars only in the night sky? No. They are there during daytime too. 
but they are hidden by the sunlight. This verse reassures us that our salvation doesn't depend on our actions or merits, but solely on God's love and compassion. Amen? Amen. It emphasizes grace-based salvation through faith. Amen to that. This verse, during Israel's time of suffering and destruction, nonetheless assures us that God's love and compassion are still with them and with us, giving us hope. Amen. Here, let me introduce one, one lady. She is Margaret Higgins, an American journalist. She was always present in the turbulent moments of world history, vividly reported many dangerous and crucial moments, and earning Pulitzer Prize, America's top journalism award. The award-winning article was about the Korean War. Amid the extreme cold of minus 40 degrees and heavy snow during a battle between Allied forces and Chinese troop soldiers, shaking with their fear of death and fatigue, were eating frozen canned food. Beside her stood a tall soldier with a weary expression, barely able to keep his eyes open. Curious about his feelings, she asked, if I were God and could give you anything, what would you ask for first? The soldier initially said nothing. Then after for a while, replied, give me tomorrow. If the end of the world meant there was a tomorrow, he believed he could endure the current hardships. His answer showed how difficult and exhausting it was to live day by day in endless war. That's right. As long as the future is guaranteed, present hardships are bearable. What hardship would be a problem if there's a bright future? The problem is when the future looks bleak, the present is also painful. When the future is uncertain, disappointment is great. Anxiety about the future makes the present unbearably painful. We have a future. We have tomorrow. We have tomorrow on this earth and in heaven. Amen. 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 I will live diligently with this hope. I pray that you do the same. If you remember this word, it's new every morning. Let's look at Lamentation chapter 3, verse 23. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The fact that God's love and compassion are renewed every morning means we get a new start and recovery opportunity every day. It signifies that God's grace is always with us. It means God renews our lives. And God's faithfulness shows He's a faithful God who keeps His promise. Amen to that. Jeremiah, remember that God bestows new grace every morning. And even in despair, he found hope by recalling God's love and compassion. Amen. Just like the bright morning sunshine, don't forget that God always gives us hope for the future. This teaches us that we must remember God's love and compassion in any situation and keep hope. The tomorrow that the soldier longed for during the Korean War wasn't just a matter of time. It was a symbol of hope and salvation from God. Likewise, we should believe in the tomorrow that God gives us and trust in His faithfulness. Be thankful for the day God has given us today and have a hope tomorrow. Take confident steps toward tomorrow. Watch the Olympics and cheer on the athletes and be inspired and aspire to be an Olympian of faith. Dream of winning a gold medal when you finally meet God and believe that God is always with us, preparing our tomorrow. I pray that you will be victorious today and tomorrow in the hands of, of the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us tomorrow. We thank you for giving us hope for the heaven and everlasting life. Father, 
Let us not give up. Let us not quit. And let us remember you are always with us. You are always holding our hands. Father, we thank you for giving us faith and let us continuously hold your hands and we can keep running and running until we see you in heaven. Now I'm asking your abundant blessing in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit to every one of us here, as well as our family, our churches, and our countries, all the people who's going through a tough time and hard time in the world, and all the medical staff taking care of patients, all the missionaries, ministers spreading your word throughout the world, all the soldiers fighting for peace and freedom throughout the countries, bring them home safely. Amen.